thanks everyone who made it back here after lunch. I hope your coffee is already kicking in. And I will also do my best to do at least a half of a good job as Omar did with keeping time. So uh, today I prepared you some snippets in terms of edge challenges and uh, a solution example. So let me just dive in. Uh, before getting to the content, I'm Ildi Govancha. I work as Senior Manager of Community and Ecosystem at The Open. Infrastructure Foundation, now you can really hear me and I can breathe. Um, so if you did not, would not get a chance to talk at the event, uh, you can find me in email um, or ping me on Twitter or any other uh, chat or social media platform where I'm available. Uh, would love to talk to you about edge computing and um, to give um, some ideas in terms of um, topics that uh, topics to cover. Um, I prepared some food for thought um, in the first half of the uh, half of the talk. Um, so use case examples. Um, on your left side, uh, the diagram and the text under uh, is telecommunications and 5G. And uh, you probably ask why it's even on the slide, right? Um, I like to keep it um, because on one hand, it is a good example for something that is running in production already. And if you ask me on my phone, it doesn't always work very well, um, but it is running in production. And if you check the diagram on, uh, again, your left, then you can see that it is something that goes out from the core to the edge. And um, in my experience, when people talk about edge computing, um, we often tend to focus only on the tiny edge and forget about what it is on the edge of, that it belongs to usually a much larger um, connected, massively distributed system that in fact um, uh, provides you with a lot of a lot of challenges, and even if you only look at the uh, the right side of the diagram with the with the cell towers and uh, uh, user and machine devices uh, that are connected, um, that still is a challenging area. On um, on your uh, 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 right side, uh, I brought another example, which is industrial IoT, um, where we are currently in the stage of. Uh, factories getting digitalized and uh, they are looking into how to apply um, cloud um, on the factory floors, how to utilize uh, a better way of, again, uh, using their resources and at the same time dealing with challenges like uh, mission critical applications and uh, safety of, of not just machines but also humans. Um, so how you deal with a lot of sensors and components on one factory floor and how you deal with multiple factories being connected. And if you look at the text on the slide, you will see a lot of similar um, characteristics and requirements in terms of hardware acceleration. Um, again, some real-time operation in there. Um, what happens if you have disruption in your network? So at the end of the day, um, these two use cases might not be that different from each other, even though one is in some extent for much further ahead than the other one. So as a, as a summary, um, I have a slide about production challenges, but I re what I really want to focus on is complexity um, because the other thing that I hear really often is how we can come up with something simple, a simple solution. But at the end of the day, especially if you think about the, uh, the telecom example with the, uh, the massively distributed large telecom backbone um, infrastructure, how can that be simple? Does anyone think that it can be simple? don't see hands yet, so um, probably not. But uh, you can always come and prove me wrong. Um, so one thing that, that I hear more and more as a conversation topic in, um, in the area of edge is how important automation and orchestration is. So um, that is something on this slide that I really, really wanted to, uh, to highlight. Um, and we have some solutions in that area, but I think that is something that we can all work together on coming up um, with even more components in that area. And to the end of this segment, um, I prepared some questions and I don't have answers for you because most of these questions, in my opinion, will have different answers depending on what your use case is, what your solution is, uh, what your interest in edge computing is. So, um, for instance, 
what is edge computing? Is it only at the edge, that tiny edge side, for instance, or is that the whole core to edge infrastructure depends on where you sit and where you're uh, looking at the system from? Or another example of uh, conversations that I've been hearing uh, recently, for instance, a, a comment that said that um, Kubernetes was designed for large data centers and is not applicable at the edge because of, again, uh, the structure of, of the edge and the requirements at the edge. What do you think? Do you think it's true? Do you think it's, it has a point? Do you think it's absolute nonsense? Who knows? I think it's a great conversation topic. And again, I personally don't have an answer for you that would rule it all. But I would love to chat about these questions and some other ones with you when there is some time for that. And just to show um, one example that kind of goes into an aspect of some of those questions and some of the requirements and complexity and automation. Um, it's the uh, Starling X open source project. Um, it is a fully integrated open source edge cloud platform. So in that sense, the, on the previous diagram, um, it does have the um, distributed infrastructure model and it's something that, that you would use and install that would cover um, your infrastructure from the core to the edge. That's the context and that is the scope of the project. Um, and when it comes to Kubernetes and the CNCF ecosystem, you will see that there's Kubernetes in there, there's Fluxseed in there, Helm containers. So um, it is a project that integrates Kubernetes and it adds some more components like the purple icons um, on the diagram that are helping in the area of that automation and orchestration to, uh, to manage that end-to-end, -end, core to edge infrastructure and provide, um, again, an end-to-end -end home uh, for your ab edge applications. Um, I'm probably mm, running lowish on time, but still all right. So when it comes to, um, again, um, something similar to what the, uh, the telecom and 5G use case diagram was showing you. What Starling X covers is you can um, install uh, a central component in the central cloud and have your central cloud infrastructure covered with a single pane of glass um, management dashboard and uh, you can use that dashboard to deploy edge sites uh, on various sizes. Um, on one server, multiple servers, um, or like a regional data center sized um, environment, uh, different high availability scenarios. And um, what's cool about the project is you can have a small edge site with only container workloads. And uh, what the platform takes care of for you is um, keeping all the sites in sync with the central cloud and uh, making sure that if you have disruption in the network um, and an edge site loses connection to the central cloud, then once the connection builds back up, um, it becomes synchronized all over again. And in the meantime, the edge site does have autonomy, so it still has kind of the, um, the full control and operation available at the edge site. Um, and when it comes to the uh, one single server deployment, it is, just to use the fancy buzzword, hyperconverged. So you have all compute, storage, and networking functionality on that one sometimes tiny server. Um, the latest release is 7.0. Um, there are some examples on the slide of some of the features that are new. What I would like to highlight is things like the uh, precision time protocol, um, which is something that is usable um, both in the um, 5G use case, as well as in something like industrial IoT, where again, those real-time mission critical um, applications um, are highly dependent on PTP and also uh, time-sensitive networking. And um, it's an open source project, so if anyone is interested in checking it out, um, just a few links on the slide in terms of where information and the community um, are available. And if you would like to meet the community, then um, we do have um, something that we call Open Infra Live. It is a live, um, one hour long interactive show on Thursdays. Um, so you can catch um, industry experts and um, community members talking about um, open source infrastructure, challenges, solutions, um, predictions for 
um, you know, the mid long term future. And if you have any ideas in terms of um, what you would like to talk about, please submit them on ideas.openinfra.live. And if you would like to see the community in person, then uh, the next Open Infrastructure Summit will be in uh, Vancouver in June next year, and our um, CFP opens in just a few weeks, uh, mid-November. So um, I hope that we will be seeing you there. And with that, that's all I had for today, just in time.